Hey guys and welcome to my review of Gold. This movie was pretty impactful, at least for the first half. The, uh, before the intermission was great. I, I loved that first half. Second half kind of fell through, but we'll get into that in a second. But let's just start with that beginning. I mean, that was a big, big impactful beginning. It starts in 1936 Germany and we're following the British Indian team, which I actually had no idea that that was a thing. So that's something I learned. I didn't know that they actually acknowledged India at all, uh, which is pretty sad that whole the whole prologue was pretty impactful obviously it's set against the backdrop of Nazi Germany so there's a lot of backstory already there even if you're not Indian or familiar with this particular game you you know what Nazi Germany is you know who Hitler is Hitler makes a cameo didn't really like his casting there but that's okay that's not really important but there's a lot of power powerful moments in that opening prologue I mean the, the Zig Heil moment where they all salute Hitler, let you know where you were, let you know that this was Germany, this wasn't anywhere else in the world, but it also made, it was a nice little plant because the payoff at the end of the prologue was everybody was cheering for India or British India, uh, which is something I learned, I didn't really know that they were classified that way. I just would assume that if any Indians played for Britain that they would just be Britain, but I learned something new every day. I had no idea. I actually had no idea that the team was that good, that they had won three or two years prior to the start of the movie. They win the third one, and then the whole movie is about winning that fourth title, but the one first true title for India. I enjoyed what came right after that too, because then World War II hits, and then all of a sudden the, the Olympics are no longer happening, so Akshay Kumar's purpose kind of just dwindles and he starts boozing, and I, I just love that whole sequence. It was intercutting with drinking and the war, and, and you know, every time a newspaper would pop up and okay, another four years, no Olympics. And it, it, he would just continue to spiral and spiral out of control. And at one point he's, he's rigging bets for wrestling matches and he, he gets so drunk. He actually tells people to bet on the wrong guy. And there was a fix in, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting little story because it allows Kumar to be fractured, to, to, to not be complete, to not be this goody two shoes who's never done anything wrong. I, I, I think of Chalk the India with Shah Rukh Khan. He didn't really do anything wrong. He, he really did not do anything wrong other than shake the Pakistani hand at the end of the match. And I know that was seen as a huge insult in that film and everything like that, but he never truly did anything like what Akshay does in this film. He, he's, he's not really off-centered. And I, I enjoyed that. I wish there was more. I wish he got more into trouble with his antics. He doesn't really do that. I know one moment in the film towards the end, his drinking does, but it wasn't like what I was thinking where Maybe he was late to some things or like things that actually happened reoccurring because one of the things I enjoyed most is he's drinking the entire movie up until those last bits that I had just mentioned, that second song of the whole movie. That was a nice touch because it, it just, I just feel like the movie was so mainstream. I, I feel like it wanted to appeal to a huge broad audience that they might not, I, I didn't assume that they would do that. I, so I was really imp impressed to see that maturity uh, for lack of a better word. I enjoyed his wife. His wife was beautiful, she was hot. I enjoyed that crazy woman, but also was extremely loyal to her man. And I, I just enjoyed that whole dynamic. There's that little funny bit in the middle of the movie where Akshay's clearly manipulating her, saying, oh, you know, so-and-so is gonna pay for this, and yes, you can cook everything. And, and then the wife was overhearing all this stuff, and she's basically like, who's this bitch? She's not gonna do any of that. I'll cook, I'll do all this. And so these little moments like that, that were fun. I enjoyed that, the you know the humor's there, but there's also this there's also a sense of, of realism as I've mentioned before, a sense of seriousness to the subject matter because the movie takes place prior to the separation of India into Pakistan and India when the independence happens, and the the movie deals with that too. There was some pretty strong imagery of uh, Pakistani, well Indian at that point, people being hung because they're Muslim and there's riots and. It's pretty interesting. I actually wish it went a little bit deeper into that, but that's not what the story's about, so it's okay. I just was really involved with what was going on, so I actually wanted to just see more uh, because I was learning learning new things. I mean, I didn't really realize it was that. It was basically like one day we're, we're all together under the same banner, and then boom, we split, and then there's this huge fight. Now, I know it's not that simple. I understand that, but I'm just saying that's how it's presented in the movie. But... So there's, there's clearly some sort of basis of reality. I, obviously, it's probably condensed and everything like that. I can assume that. But it's, it's just interesting. And it was really interesting to watch that through the eyes of the hockey team because you get to watch them play a little bit together and become this great uni 
unified team and then there's a split and then half the team literally separates so it was interesting to see that to see pakistan have their own team and then when they actually do play in the in the olympics uh, I know India doesn't play Pakistan, but I meant Pakistan plays England. There's this nice little tension there just by virtue of you already know who these Pakistani people are. So it's a nice little uh, character development there. One thing that felt out of place both times it happened, but I get it, were the two songs of the film. Both involved drinking and dancing. The first one I, I felt was like so out of place because it didn't fit with any of the, the tone that it came before it. But it was so upbeat and fun, I just said, you know, I get it. I understand what they're doing. This is Spike Lee and Malcolm X where they just break out into dance, really, right in the middle of the movie. <laughs> so I went with it. It didn't bother me. But that second time, I felt... Since it's supposed to be such a serious moment, and I understand the purpose, the first song was super and happy and everyone liked the fact that he was drinking and just having this fun time, and then the second time when they drugged him or whatever they put in, I don't know what they put in this, this alcohol, and they made him dance and, and all this stuff, it was kind of too far and no one liked him. And I, and I got the point, it was like some nefarious purpose by that short fat dude that I didn't like. So I, I get it, but I almost feel like the movie was so serious, it would have been more interesting to watch that develop in real time to show him actually drink to show him actually be drunk to have to show him try to sing try to do this and basically embarrass himself more than just what the song was doing because the song was still upbeat the song was still happy and it was kind of like a, a way to soften the blow it, it because that's basically what it did it softened that impact and I felt like it could have really been a huge hard gut punch I mean like I said I understand the point I got it it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it would, it, I, like I said, maybe this is just my American perspective, but it might have been more interesting to actually see him, see that scene take place over a few minutes, uh, as opposed to just a song. Because as they were dancing, the white girl falls in the waterfall at the end, or the, the water fountain, excuse me, and she's laughing, and she wasn't supposed to, because when they cut to the wide shot, she's super serious and shocked that she fell in, but in the close-up, she's laughing. So there's, there's a little technical inconsistencies because of that as well as the green screen, sometimes it was just too noticeable. You can actually see the key. I understand for a budget, for a film of this budget, you know, this they're not dealing with Avengers money where they can sit and just do, it, do all this uh, work. And I'm not saying it looked bad because I didn't really feel like it was the worst thing in the world, but just certain moments had popped out. Certain moments you could tell that they weren't on a field. They were just shooting on greens, or they were on a field, excuse me, but not in a huge stadium, which is fine, like I said, but, but those, those things did stick out to me. You know, I really enjoyed the little moments towards the beginning uh, in the first half of the movie before the intermission, especially with the the super uh, great hockey player. I'm forgetting his name, sorry, but he's the show off. He's but but at the same time, he had these little moments, and especially one in particular where he's driving in his nice car, just speeding down the highway, barreling past. But he stops. He comes to the stop because he sees this homeless beggar type person. I'm not sure, and. He literally takes all his clothes off, his nice suit with the chip vest and everything like that, and gives it to him. And I thought that was it pretty interesting because, you know, giving the, the, the people who are less than you in regards to social status the clothes right off your back. I really enjoyed that. I, I thought that was interesting because it, it did show a different side to this asshole character, for lack of a better word, even though he wasn't an asshole at no point, but he was very arrogant. He, he didn't pass the ball, reminded me of... If you guys watch basketball, Kobe Bryant, you know, he's, he's known as this guy who's just super selfish because he knows how good he is, um, ultra competitive, et cetera, et cetera. But so to see that other side of him was nice. To see the Humil, I believe his name is, I'm totally forgetting, I don't know why, I just watched this movie, but the, the main guy who doesn't get into the very last game, those little moments he had with his girlfriend at the very beginning were interesting. It was interesting to see him get essentially arrested for nothing just so he could play for this specific police cricket team at the beginning. I feel like that's illegal, but apparently not. I don't know, that was also interesting to see. That was just something I've never seen before in any movie. So the last half of the movie, however, wasn't the film's strong suit. I mean, honestly, this is the first Indian movie that had an intermission that actually went intermission length. So what I mean by that is normally the way the movies happen here is intermission happens, intermission title card happens, and then 
two seconds later, the title card goes down and the movie starts right back up again. This was a true intermission where we had 15 minutes of nothing, downtime, of just sitting there. And so for me, intermissions always break the pace of movies. They just always do. I, I, I don't like them. I understand why they exist. They're made for... So people can go get popcorn, use the restroom for a very, very long movie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I get it, but sometimes it doesn't always work. And for me, that really t it's not the movie's fault, but it took me out of it. So when I finally did go to, to approach that second half, I felt like the movie kind of changed into a sports drama. You know, that first half didn't really show a lot of cricket. I mean, it, it showed what it needed to show to establish the, 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 the relationship and, and the fact that these guys are good at what they do. But it really wasn't like a chalk day where it was just straight about let's train, let's 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 focus on team building, all this stuff. That was kind of pushed more to that last hour. And for me, it's not that it was bad because I, I I wasn't bored by any of it. It just I lost focus of Akshay at that moment because he really wasn't the center anymore. It was more about building the team. And I, and I know there was there were moments where he definitely was pushing things forward. He was obviously asking for money at all times and, and, and trying to make it work, talking to the Buddhist monk, which was funny. I, I enjoyed that scene where he supposedly had a five-year silence. And then he mentioned Samrat's going to come. And he, the guy's like, oh, he's going to come. He starts talking like that was funny. So I, I mean, I, I'm not saying he wasn't doing anything. I get it. But, you know, that first half was very historically backed I felt like I felt like I was learning something new and then this second half just was straight it just dealt with the story at hand and like I said I get it but it would have been interesting to see more carryover of that first half into the second half I know a lot of people out there told me that a lot of mainstream Indian films with the intermission are basically cut into two movies so you you can get this historical drama in the first part and then the second drama the second part you get this sports drama but yeah i liked how i liked how it ended i liked how it all came to be i really appreciated everything and all the events that that led up to the ending i mean i was with it the suspense and all that stuff i thought the hockey was shot very well i don't watch it myself but i just feel like there was a lot of good action going on so that's always good overall i'd say this is about a seven uh if the second half of the movie was a little bit more like the first half probably would have been higher up because just on that first half alone i that was like an eight it was very good. I was very involved, especially the prologue. The prologue was amazing. I enjoyed it a lot, as I keep saying. But yeah, so that'll do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the review. What would you give it for those who saw it out there? I thought it was a great Independence Day movie. Obviously, I'm not Indian myself, but I could totally see how, if I were an Indian, how I would feel at the end of it, because it does have a good message. Uh, it doesn't really talk shit about Pakistani people or vice versa. I mean, it doesn't really show the the, the true conflict, but it does let people know that at one time everyone was under the same rule and they were trying to unite together to fight England, which I thought was an interesting message to let people know, put out into the world. So with that, that'll do it for this. Don't forget to check out our review, uh, or excuse me, our podcast with Korakon Nala. Gian's going to watch this movie by then. Korakon says he's also going to do that, so we're probably going to continue this discussion a little bit on that podcast as well as talk about a bunch of other things. But anyway, that'll do it. Thank you.